Christ's people, imitators of him. A sermon. Number 21. Delivered on Sabbath morning, April 29, 1855, by the Rev. C. H. Spurgeon. At Exeter Hall, Strand. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. Acts 4 verse 13. Behold! What a change divine grace will work in a man, and in how short a time. That same Peter, who so lately followed his master afar off, and with oaths and curses denied that he knew his name, is now to be found side by side with the loving John, boldly declaring that there is salvation in none other name save that of Jesus Christ, and preaching the resurrection of the dead, through the sacrifice of his dying Lord. The scribes and Pharisees soon discover the reason of his boldness. Rightly did they guess that it rested not in his learning or his talents, for neither Peter nor John had been educated, they had been trained as fishermen, their education was a knowledge of the sea, of the fisherman's craft, none other had they, their boldness could not therefore spring from the self-sufficiency of knowledge, but from the spirit of the living God. Nor did they acquire their courage from their station, for rank will confer a sort of dignity upon a man, and make him speak with a feigned authority, even when he has no talent or genius, but these men were, as it says in the original text, idioti, private men, who stood in no official capacity, men without rank or station. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and private individuals, they marveled, and they came to a right conclusion as to the source of their power, they had been dwelling with Jesus. Their conversation with the Prince of Light and Glory, backed up, as they might also have known, by the influence of the Holy Spirit, without which even that eminently holy example would have been in vain, had made them bold for their master's cause. Oh! My brethren, it were well if this condemnation, so forced from the lips of enemies, could also be compelled by our own example. If we could live like Peter and John, if our lives were living epistles of God, known and read of all men, if, whenever we were seen, men would take knowledge of us, that we had been with Jesus, it would be a happy thing for this world, and a blessed thing for us. It is concerning that I am to speak to you this morning, and as God gives me grace, I will endeavour to stir up your minds by way of remembrance, and urge you so to imitate Jesus Christ, our heavenly pattern, that men may perceive that you are disciples of the Holy Son of God. First, then, this morning, I will tell you what a Christian should be, secondly, I will tell you when he should be so, thirdly why he should be so, and then fourthly how he can be so.